So refresh tokens are wonderful for the user. Why? Because it keeps your JSON web token more secure and allows you to not have to constantly bug the user to sign in again and again every other day. But how do we implement refresh tokens in Angular? Well, it's by using interceptors to catch any errors we get. And what does that look like in the code? Well, let's jump into the project so I can show you. The first thing that we're going to need to go do is open your Angular project and create a new file and we're going to call it interceptor.ts. And once you have this file here, some of you might be asking, well, what is an interceptor for? I've done Angular before, but I've never used an interceptor. Well, an interceptor is an Angular service that intercepts HTTP requests and responses generated by the built-in HTTP client in Angular. It kind of observes every request going in and out of your Angular application, you know, to whatever APIs you have or whatever other backend services, and then also checks the responses back from those backends. And then you can either act upon those requests or just let them go by. But you do have access to whatever's going in and out of your client side and you can access them as you need. But now let's hop into the code to see how you actually handle refresh tokens within Angular. So quickly, before we actually get into actually the code of the interceptor, I want to just explain what project I'm using. So we are going to be using the .NET API for my JWT authentication and authorization playlist. So if you guys want to actually go see the C sharp code and all the methods that make the JSON web tokens and refresh tokens happen, go check out the playlist above it should be up here somewhere. Uh, but now let's get into why you're actually here, the angular side of this project. So like I said, the backend API is over here. We have a method that revokes a token that is done right here. We have a method that sets the refresh token in our HTTP cookie, and we have a refresh token method as well. And then we have a method to generate the refresh token. So all of this happens in our backend, um, and you guys do not have to worry about that. And just to show you guys, these are the methods. We have a login method, a refresh token, revoke token, login with Google, register, and our get color list is kind of the one thing we're trying to access with you know our access tokens. But that is the backend, and then on the front end side, we have this login form. So we have logging in with Google. If you guys have seen that video, you know what I'm referencing. And then we have a login screen here. This uses, you know, an email and a password. And then once we go in here, we go into the only other page that we have here, which is what allows us to either, you know, um, access that one API uh, endpoint that we have of get color list. And to access it, we need to have the proper access tokens. And for that, you know, we need to go check our JWT. And if we don't have a valid JWT, we go and use our refresh token at that point. So that is the project we are using. So now that we have our interceptor.ts file created and we have this intercept method, let's start filling the file out. First thing, we're going to need this constructor that's going to have this private injector. This is basically going to be to inject the services that we need. Next up, we're going to have a private router. This is going to be the route to whatever page that we need to force the user to kind of see. Then we're going to have this private snack bar. This is Angular Material snack bar. And it's basically just to give a little bit more information to the user once things happen, like telling them, hey, uh, we refresh your tokens. Can you now go and do this? The next thing I'm going to add here is this counter variable. We're going to be using it to kind of just keep track of how many errors we've seen uh, to then trigger certain things. And now inside the intercept method, we're going to have this return next dot handle. We're going to pass in the HTTP requests that we sent out to the backend and we're going to dot pipe and then we're going to catch whatever error comes back from the backend and we're going to do it in this handle auth error method, which we're going to create just now. So I've gone ahead and created this handle auth error method and we pass in this HTTP error response and that comes from this catch error method. Uh, so now the first thing that we're going to need to add is this if statement, which is looking for unauthorized request. Uh, and is doing that by checking the error status of the HTTP error response for 401, which means unauthorized. Then we are checking, hey, is this the first time we have seen an error? I hope so, because now we need to be in here. Then we're going to increase the counter because we've now seen one error clearly because we got a 401. Next step, we need to inject uh, our auth service. What is our auth service? Our auth service contains all our HTTP client methods. So that is our login methods, our refresh token, revoke token, save token, and all of that stuff. So we need to actually use that within our interceptor because we need to call things uh, to go refresh our token or revoke a token later on. And now that we've injected uh, our auth service, we're going to call the refresh token method. Why? Let me explain kind of what's going on here. So we made our first initial request out for something. Like I said earlier in the video, we had that get color list method. Let's say we went and tried to hit that. 
but for some reason we got a 401 back from our api that means that we're having some type of issue with our access token so what does that mean let's go and first attempt to use that refresh token that we have to go get a new json web token so that is basically what we're going to do and why i'm saying kind of this is the first error and why i'm keeping a counter because if it's our first error we want to increase and then we want to go okay well it's the first one it's probably just the access token. You know, just be lax about it. We don't need to force the user out yet. So let's go and call that service.refresh token. And let's use our refresh token to get a new JWT. And if it works and we come back into here, we're just going to tell the user, hey, the token's refresh. You're good to go. Just try again, whatever you're going to do. It should work now. But if we have an error, this is where it's now kind of our second strike. And now we have to revoke the token because clearly the refresh token and the access token have some type of issue. So now we need to tell the user, hey, we need to restart. Something's, something's off. Uh, or your refresh token's also expired. So we need to go navigate you back to the login page, which is this one. If I show you guys in the app.module, it's the login component that I'm sending them back to. And just log in and restart the whole kind of loop, the cycle. And the last stuff that I'd add here was this return of just again, returns a message that says kind of what's going on. And then down here in this else, well, hey, if this wasn't, you know, not our only, like if this wasn't our first error, then we don't need to go here. We need to reset our counter to zero because clearly we've seen more than one error and we need to throw uh, our error, which is going to lead us into this revoke token method. And I'm going to show you guys in a little bit once we actually test this, how the whole flow of going through, you know, we're good, we failed once, and then we failed twice. But this is all the code that we need in here. We can save it. This is everything that has to happen in here, but we do need to go ahead and we need to add it to our app.module so that it knows to use it. So go to your app.module and go to your providers. Go here, you need to add your HTTP interceptor, your interceptor right here, and then also add some configuration for your Angular Material snack bar so that it closes at some point and it doesn't stay open indefinitely. Well, now that I have this in the app.module, now I can go ahead and show you guys the, this interceptor actually working because this is actually all the code that we're going to need. But first of all, so I can kind of show you guys how the interceptor kind of steps through the process, I want to add a few debuggers here just so we can step through all these methods and you guys can kind of see when and how we hit all of these things. Uh, and you can have kind of a bigger picture of how the flow of this application works when it comes to going to the back end, coming back, and you guys can see how it would work in a real application. But before we dive into that, I'd appreciate it if you guys dropped a like on this video so I can spread to more developers on YouTube. Thank you. So now I restarted my API. My API is running right here. So let's go ahead and actually test this. My front end is also here. So let's go ahead and test this. I first need to create a user. Uh, if you guys have seen my API videos, you guys know that I'm using a user list. So every time I restart, I have to create a new user. So let's do this, create myself. Now I should be able to go back to my front end and sign in correctly. And cool, I logged in successfully. Now, if we go to our dev tools and look at our uh, look at our cookies, we should see that we have a refresh token and an access token. So they are both here. So we should be good to go. If I click get list, we should be able to access uh, our one endpoint and go back here and see that we got our value. So everything's cool. That first kind of step of getting your tokens, uh, going to our going to our API and getting something worked just fine. But now let's go and I guess get to the first point of failure, which would be what? We have some type of issue with our JSON web token. So to do that and how I'm going to mimic it is basically I'm just going to delete it. So let's, let's say we don't have an access token. So obviously it's going to try and go here, but it's immediately going to give us a 401 because we're, we don't have a, we don't have a token to give it. We don't have an access token. So I'm going to click it as you guys can see immediately went to the controller and it was like, Nope, you're coming right back. So we see that we have an error status of 401. So we're going to go in here and then we're going to go to our auth service and we're immediately going to go and attempt to refresh our token. So as you can see, we got here and we're trying to re refresh our token. We should be able to eventually come back. And eventually we came back from our refresh token method and we see that we got null as a response, but that's because uh, whenever I am sending back from the backend, I'm storing everything in our HTTP only cookie. So while it doesn't show here that we got it, if I go back to my application, we should see that we now have two tokens back here and we're good to go. We were able to go here and we should be able to say, hey, tokens refreshed, try again. Okay, cool. I can try again. 
uh, let's go get our list and as we can see now this worked so now let's go to kind of our our, our third point our we failed twice now what do we have to do we have to sign the user out and make them log in again because our access token and our refresh token are broken so how am i going to mimic this well first of all i'm going to log out and then i'm going to go back to my api and what is the method that i'm calling i'm calling refresh token so let's say that my token was expired something with my refresh token was wrong and we actually can't get another uh jwt well, what I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to set it right now. I'm going to force it to just tell me unauthorized so we can get a second point of failure. So I'm going to restart my API uh, and let's go through the whole process again so you guys can see it. So we're going to go back here, set this, create my user. We're good here. Let's go back to our front end. Make sure that our dev tools are open. Cool. Sign back in. Now we're good. As we can see, we should be able to get our color list just fine because, you know, we just signed in our refresh token, access token. They're all good. But now let's say that I delete this access token. Well, it's going to go to that refresh token method, but there's going to be a second point of failure. The first was our JSON web token is failed. So we're going to go and try and refresh using our refresh token. But now this method is also going to fail because it's going to give us our second unauthorized. So now we're going to go back to our uh, our dev tools and our front end and we're going to try and get a list and as you can see this is our first point of failure and we're going to try and refresh our token and we're going to see that we just came right back but now our counter is already one so we're immediately going to go back here and we're going to throw another error and when we throw this error it's going to take us into this error. So the error part of the refresh token method. And what happens in here is we are revoking our token. So going back to our API, I can show you guys in our revoke token method. What happens is we basically go into our user table of our database and we basically clear our token out. We don't have anything anymore. What does this mean? It means we need to get a new refresh. We need to get a new refresh token. Um, and we're going to kick the user out and we're going to make them resign in, start the whole process over again. And if we go back, you know, we're going to see this right here. We're going to navigate them right back to where they need to go, the login page. So stepping through, getting back here and opening this up. And now we step through. We're going to see that we're going to navigate them right to the home page. And that is what we did here. So that was the last point of failure. So the first step is everything's good. We were able to access whatever resource we wanted. The second one was we failed one time and now we need to refresh our token and now we're good to go. The user can now just need a little notification, just however you want to handle it. But hey, do whatever you want to do. You should be good to go now. But then the second one is if you fail again, now we need to just sign in because our access token and our refresh token failed. Now that's kind of the, the last point is you need to just start over again. But that is what we're doing here, guys. Um, and that is what I have for you. That is how you use an interceptor with an HTTP only cookie, with refresh tokens, and with a JWT. And now that you know how to manage your refresh tokens using interceptors in your Angular client side, maybe you say, dude, I'm just too lazy to do a traditional login using an email and a password. Maybe I'd rather my users have the easiest and most convenient way of signing in possible. Well, maybe that is by signing in with your Google account. And you can learn that by clicking on this video right here.